Hi, and welcome to episode 32 of Notable Needlework. I am Kate, Notable Needle, N-O-T-E-A-B-L-E, on Ravelry, on Plurk, and on Twitter. Um, if you are a new viewer, thanks for coming to check me out. If you're a returning viewer, you may notice that my setup looks a bit different today. Um, I, <laughs> I have been rearranging my office, which is where I record, and finally cleaning up a buttload of the clutter in here. Um, I'll talk about that more in a sec. It has been a very interesting week um, for a whole bunch of reasons. Anyways, so finished objects. I think I only have one. Maybe. Yeah, I only have one since last time I recorded. Um, so I have been making hats or fingerless gloves um, for the members of my clinical group. And this is the latest one. This is for my friend Courtney, who gave me um, free reign to do whatever I wanted for her hat. She didn't have a specific idea. So this is with the Lion Brand Amazing Yarn that I showed last week, and it's the Murray, the Mystery Beret pattern um, on Rev, which is free. And I flippin' love how this turned out. I really love the colors, and I will probably be doing a hat like this for myself um, in the same kind of yarn, but maybe a different colorway, because... You know, this is sort of noticeable <laughs> that we would be wearing the exact same hat. Um, but the Lion Brand Amazing has a bunch of different colors that are all really pretty. Um, there's, I think it's called Glacier. It's like Glacier or Alaska. It's a bunch of blues and greens, and I would probably grab that one for me. But I really like how this turned out. And I have a feeling that Courtney will as well. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. It definitely has a nice slouch to it, and I like that. And I'm sure she will enjoy it when I bring it to her on Monday because it's actually getting cold here. Uh, I think the current temperature is 46 degrees. Granted, it is 7.30 in the morning, um, but I think the high is supposed to not even break 70. I think it's 69 or something today, which is good because we're getting a new couch and we have to move it ourselves. Um, so I'm sure I'll appreciate the cold then. Um, so as far as knitting goes, that is the only finished object I have. Um, works in progress. I have, of course, started the next hat for my clinical group. I think there's only two, there's two more girls hats, and then I have to come up with what I'm going to do for the guys hats. Um, so this is, I think it's called like the coffee beans hat. It's really just ribbing, stockinette body for like forever is six or eight inches and then decreases so it's nothing like too fancy but I think that it will be a nice neutral hat um, for my friend that I'm making it for um, I think she'll look super cute in it what I, what I'm planning on doing is when I get everything finished to take a photo of all of us in like our different hats or fingerless gloves because one of my friends doesn't wear hats very often um, so she wound up getting the Terenza mitts that I knit along for the Blair Clock Astro Challenge. Um, other works in progress besides the hat. Oh, and this is out of Patton's, I'm calling it Patton's, Patton's Classic Wool in the Jade Heather colorway. And, um, Courtney's hat was the Lion Brand Amazing in the Joshua Tree colorway. Um, mum, 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 mum. so my other, I think it's my only other work in progress right now. 
I'm sure there's other things hibernating that I'm finding as I'm trying to declutter this room, which is going to take a while. Um, my other work in progress are, I am just calling these my happy socks. It's that, um, it's the one thing about Magic Loop is there's cords and string everywhere. <sighs> Anyways, this is the Studio June Super Cash Sock uh, in the Sunshine and Rainbows colorway. I love how it's pooling the way it is with the sort of twisted stripes. I absolutely adore it, and Will does too. Um, that's I think that's his favorite thing about this. He doesn't understand why it's called rainbow when there's no red. I told him that's why there's pink. He doesn't understand. But this is the first sock, and it's almost done. I was working on the ribbing yesterday when I was standing in all of the lines, which I'll talk about in a sec. Um, I want to get quite a bit of ribbing because the sock fits well, but I don't want it to run the risk of being eaten by my shoe and falling down. I also have cast on the second sock. I wanted to make sure that the toes matched when I was doing them. So I did both of the toes and then this one has just been with me all week. So I've been working on it, you know, in the breaks in class and breaks in the lab and when I've been killing time as I was yesterday, which I will talk about in a sec. But yeah, I love these. Um, I'm magic looping them on size twos, which is... It's definitely my first pair of Magic Loop socks, and I think that I was actually Magic Looping previous to this on hats, but I just thought that I was messing up the cable. <laughs> Anyways, it's my first official Magic Looping project. And I really like how they're turning out, and I cannot wait to wear them, and it looks like I'll actually be able to wear them soon, and I'll have to stop wearing my flip-flops. Um, that is it for knitting. Uh, for knitting, I do have a project, I have two projects planned. One of them is the last girl in my clinical groups hat, which I'm going to be doing out of the Vanish Choice um, in the Sapphire colorway, which is the same yarn that I did the Trent, the Trends Emits out of. Um, I haven't entirely decided which hat I'm doing, but I know it's going to be like a beanie shape. I don't think I'm just going to do a plain beanie, but she is very, very little. Um, I think she's just barely over five feet. <laughs> and so I, I want to make sure to have something that's not going to overpower her. And she's a bit of a tomboy. So I think that a cute beanie will suit her very well. Um, the other thing that I have planned, which I'll talk about how I acquired this pattern in a sec, but... I will be doing the, I love the fact that Diane from Knitables calls it the Terpsichore shawl. It's the Terpsichire, I'm probably still not saying that right, um, shawl. Wolf Yarns is, their podcast is doing a knit along for the shawl. And I acquired it yesterday. Well, no, I don't actually have the pattern yet, but I'm getting the pattern yesterday, which was a complete surprise to me. And so I went through looking and I found my wedding yarn. And I think that that shawl will be perfect with this yarn because as much as I love this yarn, I can Think of a color to add to this, a neutral to add to this if it's striped or something, 
that would really do it justice. The closest thing I can think of is like a light gray, but I would want something that reminded me of our wedding and short of adding a different color green, which I really don't want to do. I can't think of anything. And this already has the stripes in it. So I will be knitting the, yeah, I'm just calling it Terpsichore because I think that sounds better. I know it's supposed to be a Greek goddess or Roman goddess. Um, I don't care. Terpsichore because Terps. Um, if you haven't watched before, my baby brother plays tennis for the University of Maryland, so he is a Terp. Um, so I'm calling it the Terpsichore. No, Terpsichore. It's the Terp. I'm just going with it. Um, and I thought that this would be a perfect fit. So this is my Highland Handmaid's Wedding Yarn in the Mrs. Warrener colorway, which is oh so appropriate after yesterday. Um, yeah, I'm just going to throw that in right now. So after waiting two and a half months, we finally got our wedding license yesterday, our marriage license. I'm sorry, I'm gonna stare because I really hope that the creepy guy outside has a dog. Oh, no, he's got a small child. Uh, <laughs> sorry. With the hedges, I can't see really short things. Like when you're walking right outside our apartment. And there's just this creepy guy like sort of hunched over with a hoodie up. And it looked really sketchy. And then I noticed through the holes in the hedging that there's like a three-year-old little girl on her tricycle and that's why he's watching and he's probably freezing because it's like 45 degrees outside right now um <laughs> so after two and a half months of waiting we finally got our marriage license on thursday night um which just made my day it made my week so yesterday, Friday, I went everywhere. I went to the Social Security office, got my, I mean, I don't have my new card yet, but they gave me a little printout that says that it's from the Social Security Administration, and this is my new name, and this was my old name, and it matches my number, whatever. And so instead of having to wait until next week to go to the DMV, I got to take that handout and go to the DMV and get my new driver's license, um, which I don't have in here. But the way that Alabama does it is you get a little um, paper version of your license and then like two weeks later they send you the actual laminated one. Um, and I actually got a decent picture, which is kind of a first. It still looks funny. Will has an awesome driver's license photo. One of these days... I'm going to get him to come back and show that because he looks fantastic in it. He does get carded all the time though because he really does look like he's 16. Anyways, so I got the social security taken care of, I got driver's license taken care of, I changed my name with the school registrar and the school of nursing student affairs. The only thing things that I have left are to get my actual new school ID card with my new name on it, which they said I could do starting Monday, and I will probably do it either Monday or Friday, because um, I'm getting a haircut on Friday. I don't really want to go all the way to school on Friday if I don't have to, but we'll see if it's gone through on Monday. Because I really don't want to take my photo in my nursing school uniform. Because you can actually see, like, the shirt and stuff in the photo that they take. Anyways. So it's the school ID card and changing the name on my credit cards. Which I will probably do today. Um, I think I will make a set of purchases that I know I'm going to have to make in the near future. Um, and get groceries and stuff and fill up my car with gas and then change it because I'm sure that they will be 
canceling the card I have now to send me the new one, and I'll probably stagger um, my two credit cards. So just in case something happens, I still have um, a way to pay for things. I mean, I always have my debit card, but I hate using that if I don't have to, just because... It's a joint account and we use it to pay bills. So if, you know, one of us has to take money out of it and there's bills pending, <laughs> bad things can happen. Anyways, so that is it for knitting. I'm looking forward to doing that. And if you want to knit along with um, Wolf Farms, the Terpsichire pattern, all pattern, um, there's I think a small, medium, large, and maybe extra large sizes. It uses either from 400 to 1,000 yards of fingering weight yarn or fingering weight and lace yarn. I haven't actually read the pattern yet. Um, but once I get it, I will let you know. Because um, Diane from Knittables is knitting along with... I think she's knitting along with it? Yes. Yes, she's knitting along with it. Um, it goes until October 31st. And so, since I'm only doing the little chalet um, kerchief version, because I obviously only have 400 yards, I am expecting to have that done in time. Um, it, From what I've seen from other people's projects, it looks like a quick knit. So I'm really looking forward to see how that turns out. So what could be left if that's all my knitting? I have been spinning again, finally. So this came about because for whatever reason I decided that I really want to play with colored fiber. So. I have a boatload of the Knit Picks, um, Bear or whatever, uh, oh this is all sorts of messed up right now. <laughs> um, okay, I'm just like wrapping it around my hand so I can show the different colors. <laughs> I have a boatload of the Knit Picks, Wool of the Andes, Bear Roving, whatever. So I got it into my head that I would dye. Oh my god, why do I look so washed out? That didn't really make it better. I don't know why I look so pale right now. I don't. Anyways. So I took 200 grams of said roving and dyed it um, using Kool-Aid, of course. And it is actually kind of a gradient, I just can't wrap it around my hand very well. So I started with the regular cherry, moved down to the black cherry, did grape, and then did the berry blue. I'm looking forward to see how this turns out because this is, will actually be the first colored fiber of any sort that I have spun. Um, I have always just spun the bear and then dyed the yarn. If it wasn't for the fact that I really wanted to try plying with the different colors, I would probably just continue to do that because I think the dyeing yarn is far easier than dyeing fiber. Um, at least if you're trying to do it using a microwave. And doing a gradient. <sighs> this was a slight mess and I may have stained the counters again with the Kool-Aid, but I think it's worth it. It looks and smells exactly like cotton candy and so I'm trying really hard not to like tear off a piece and try and eat it. Not gonna lie. Um, I have to figure out, because it's two separate things of roving um, that I dyed together so that they would match up. I think I'm going to spin each one separately and then ply them together. 
and see what happens. I'll see whether I wind up trying to Navajo ply or not, but I have never plied my yarn because I like working with singles because I'm weird like that. Um, so of course to do that, I have, oh, this got all sorts of messed up. I already had some yarn on my spindle and this is my Highland Handmaid's spindle. I want to say it's birch, but I'm not sure. Um, and so it's just some bare wool of the Andes um, in about a fingering weight because I'm not planning on applying this. I, spinning and I are a very weird combination. Um, I like spinning. I know that I am doing it incorrectly. I'm getting the result that I want, but from watching other people's videos, I know that I am not doing the technique correctly. Um, my drafting triangle does not exist. I can't really explain what it is. Here, I think I have some that's already drafted. Because I need someone to tell me what it is that I am doing um, because I really don't what I wind up doing is I just pre-draft the ever-living hell out of my fiber and then I don't draft while I'm spinning um, I have tried drafting while I'm spinning, but it, I don't know. I get twist all up in the rest of the fiber and I get it really uneven and I, I don't know if it's just because I don't know what I'm doing or because that technique is just wrong. Uh, so, I don't know. What I wind up doing is just sort of following it up okay please pause for te technical difficulties so I just sort of follow it up like this Hold on. and I don't know if that's like actually a legitimate technique or if I'm just crazy because if you look at my right hand, which is this one, I don't know how, I wouldn't know how to draft while I'm doing this. And I've seen videos online. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I really don't. <laughs> it's just, I love the yarn. I love how it turns out. I just know I'm not doing it right. And that works me out. So anyways, that is what is on my spindle right now. This is what will be on my spindle. My cotton candy fiber. As well as 9 million other fibers that I keep looking at online. But I want to see how that turns out when I'm spinning with it. Because if it just looks like a jumbled mess, I really don't want to pay money um, and really ruin some beautiful fiber. Um, so I'm seeing how that turns out first. Speaking of fiber, I will actually be getting legitimate color fiber coming my way soon. So I knit along with Kate, Katie of the Domesticated Darling podcast, along with other people, um, <laughs> for the Plurk Podcaster Challenge. And I wound up winning her drawing, so that is how I got the Terpsichore pattern, or how I will be getting. Um, I have not actually received it yet because her drawing was yesterday. And I responded very late. <laughs> so, I will be getting that pattern and two ounces of... I forget what exact fiber she said that it was. But it's a really pretty burgundy color. And I'm looking forward to seeing how 
it works because I don't think it's wool. I think it might be alpaca. That might just be wishful thinking. It's, I think it's either merino or alpaca. I know it's not BFL and it's not whatever the nitpicks wool is. Dear Lord, I am not sick. I am not near death. I don't know why I look so washed out. I'm still tan from the summer. And because I'm always tan because I'm half frickin' Mexican. So, I, I don't know why I look so pale. I really don't. I think that is it for fiber related things. Yeah. So, the podcaster challenge is over. Um, evidently, I can't do basic math because I was 100% sure that I had to be done with knitting by last Saturday. Evidently, it was Sunday, although knitting along with other podcasters, I really would have had until Tuesday because the post the pictures didn't need to be posted till then. So, could I have gotten another project done? Maybe. I think I took care of all the really quick knits, though. So, it is just as well that I did not try and kill myself and do another project. So, the challenge is done for us podcasters, but now it is up to you. So, if you have not already... Please go vote in the Knitting's My Bag group on Ravelry um, in the voting thread. There are a bunch of different categories. Please be sure and actually read the categories before you vote for them. Because some people clearly are not. Um, because the Super Knitter Podcaster, which I am definitely going for because I knit along with six other podcasters it is supposed to be for the podcaster who knit along with another podcaster because I don't think Lois expected me to go completely and utterly crazy and knit along with six podcasters so I don't know what is going through people's heads when they say when they see super knitter podcaster but they are I think the only other people besides me that are being voted for are Diane from Knittables, who did knit along with another podcaster. She knit along with Becca. The other, the other two are Sheila and Wendy from Knit One Heart 2. Sheila and Wendy, I love you very much. But you didn't know along with anyone. And I, I don't know what is going through people's minds. Like, I don't know, someone who's awesome and knits really fast? I don't know. I love them both very much. They actually both have voted and they both voted for me and I appreciate that very much. Um... I know some of my viewers have voted for me. I know a lot of other people who I don't think watch me have been voting for me. Um, and I appreciate that a lot. Um, I'm not going to lie. I like the prizes that I will hopefully be getting. It's mostly just I was not crazy about the voting idea because I thought that it was unfair to smaller podcasters who maybe would not be able to get the word out about what they had done. Um, but I'm actually fairly surprised. I think part of that may have had to do with the fact that I was the first person to post in the voting thread and I had explicitly mentioned that I knit along with six podcasters and it's not like... I have all the time in the world, um, because, quite frankly, I knit along with six podcasters. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Anyways. So go vote. Um, some of the categories are actually fairly evenly split. Um, some of them, it's very clear who is going to be winning. Um, unless between now and tomorrow night, like 400 people post for someone else. I think that... The grand prize winner is fairly obvious, and I think that me winning Super Knitter is fairly obvious. Um, some of the other ones, not so much. Um, I also think it's funny that people are voting for the um, Knit Along award, which actually goes to the person who had the most people knit along with them. <laughs> So people are voting on that too. Um, so if you are going to vote, read the categories, please. And be sure to vote. Um, I very much appreciate everyone who, who has voted for me. Um, it really does mean a lot to have, to know that people are actually watching and or paying attention to what I say. Um, so yeah, in other news, nursing school, woo! So I had my first foundations test on Monday and I had another set of validations on Thursday and I passed both with flying colors. Um, the validation was medication administration. So giving shots, and it went very well. I was mostly cracking up because they cross your name off the little sheet um, when you've gone in for your validation. Whether you pass or not, they cross off the sheet so they know that they're not like still waiting for you to come in and do your first time. Because you get three times to validate. Um, the first was Thursday, I think the next... It's like Monday or Tuesday that they revalidate, and then if you don't pass that one, you revalidate again. If you don't pass that one, you fail the class. Um, but I passed, and while they were trying to find my name on the sheet, a lot of my professors have become very confused because the school still had me as McGee which is my maiden name, um, but whenever I signed anything, it would be McGee Warriner, which is my new last name. So they sort of, the professors that I am with a lot that know me individually get it. They know that it's the same person. Um, I happen to be validating with one of the faculty member, oh, Flip. I don't know what that was. It felt like something bit my foot, but I don't know what it would have bit my foot. I think it was just like a spasm or something. Um, but anyways, I was with a faculty member who knows me by face, but not by name, evidently, because she was trying to f <laughs> She was having all sorts of fun trying to find my name. <sighs> Excuse me, on the sheet. And so, after she found my name on the sheet, I went in to validate. And I was having fun with my lab instructor, who does know me, about the name thing. And I, after I knew that I had passed, I said to her, Okay, so the only thing that can make this day better now is coming home and getting my marriage license. So then y'all would stop being so confused about my name. So I came home and the marriage license was there. <laughs> Which was a very pleasant surprise. Um, yeah, I think that's it for nursing school. I have clinicals this week, so I'm getting things taken care of around the house before then. 
which is coming along slowly but surely. And we are getting a new couch today. Um, our friends are getting rid of their old one and of course we said that we'd take it. <laughs> so we're figuring out exactly how to get that here. Um, it will involve renting a truck from the Home Depot, which is actually less than 20 bucks. Which is kind of awesome. And, um, hopefully getting the two of them to help us move it. Because otherwise I don't really know how that's going to work. That's a huge couch. Um, so lots of cleaning around here. Uh, lots of cooking, actually, because... Otherwise, Will is evidently going to starve to death. I make lots of food on the weekend um, and freeze most of it so that, you know, he can just come home and microwave it and have legitimate food and not have to go out and pay like five bucks for McDonald's or whatever. Uh, the only other thing is that I will be going to see my mom and my cousin, or her cousin, she's related, um, I think she's really more of an aunt, but we always call her, call her cousin Ruby, um, in Los Alamos, New Mexico, next, next weekend. So I have not decided whether I will be recording on Wednesday night that week or waiting until I get home on Sunday. It will probably be Sunday. <gasps> and it will actually be the first time that Will and I have been apart. I think in almost four years. Wow. Yeah. Since about 2007, I think, which is when I was studying abroad in France. I think that was the last time that we were actually, like, physically separate for an extended period of time. It's only for, like, four days, but, yeah, it's the first time in a while. Um, I am really bummed. We made, we made the flight reservations in my maiden name because we still hadn't received the marriage license yet and I didn't want to risk my name not matching my ID. So now of course I still have my passport with my maiden name on it so I will just be using that to travel and not pulling out my driver's license. Because um, <laughs> they will wonder who this person is. But. We will, however, be making reservations to come home over the holidays relatively soon. Um, we had a very long discussion about that last night because it, it is not an inexpensive thing for us to go back home. Um, not, only do I have, don't, not only do we have to worry about plane tickets and renting a car once we're there, we also have to board the cats because we took Yuki with us last year on the plane, and she was fine. She's amazing at travel, but it was super expensive. To ha it's really expensive to have a cat on a plane. I think it was $125 or $150 for each flight to have her with us. Um, so not only is it less expensive to board them, <laughs> Susu and travel? Mm -mm. I can barely get her in the car. Um, she is, she does not like to travel at all. Not even a little bit. Um, she gets very nervous and <sighs> let's just say after she gets nervous, keeping her in her crate is a horrible idea. And I would not want to subject everyone on the plane to that. So, so it's the plane ticket 
car rental, boarding the cats, and um, the fact that it is lost wages uh, because Will can't work during that time. So it's not inexpensive. So we were having a very long discussion about this and I think that what we are doing is that instead of buying us gifts for Christmas, our family members are probably all going to be chipping in to help us get back for Christmas, which I am totally fine with. Um, <laughs> I asked about this on Plurk last night, and I learned that Heather from Highland Handmaids is a present whore. Um, Heather, I was cracking up when I was reading your messages. Um, so, I am not a present whore. What will probably wind up happening, because I, I really care more about being able to see our family than I do about presents, I think that I will have will conspire with them and, you know, get a pretty but inexpensive thing of fiber and wrap it and I will be happy just opening that. Like, you know, go on Etsy, get a $15, get $15 worth of fiber and put that under the tree and I'm happy. Like, on a, get Red Heart and wrap it up and it's fine. <laughs> Because my, my mother is very big about Christmas presents and unwrapping and having things be equal between all the kids, so I'll appease her with that. Because people don't know how much yarn costs. Um, so yeah, I am looking forward to that. Hopefully by the time I record next week we will have plane tickets. Um, we also have to talk to my in-laws um, because I think that we'll probably have them do that as well because um, just having my family do it is a lot for them. So I think between the two families it shouldn't be too much. I hope. But yeah, we have to get on that because otherwise the plane tickets are going to go up and that's just horrible. Um, but yeah, I hope that you're having a good week. I am so excited that the weather is starting to cool down. You have no idea. Um, it just makes me happy. I love cold weather. I love being able to wear my knit items. Oh! Excuse me. The only other thing, which of course affects none of you in Plurk, land or the interwebs is that my local yarn store is having a contest <laughs> i know i really should just back away whenever i see the word contest but yeah where if you gave them the items that you knit during the month of september um you fill out a little form saying you know what yarn you used, what pattern, where you can get the pattern. It's basically getting her shop samples. Um, but people are then going to vote on them through the month of October and there will be prizes. So I entered eight different items. <laughs> I already had warned Holly that this was going to happen um, because that's not even all of the things that I knit during the month of September because I have given away some of my Plurk Podcaster Challenge things that I knit. Um, so that wasn't even everything and there were eight items. And I think that they counted the Hermione's Cable and Eyelet hat and the Fingerless Gloves as one item because it looks like a set. But yeah. Um, I think the grand prize is a hundred dollars credit in the shop, which I would totally use <laughs> because I love Holly and I love her shop. Um, if you're in the Birmingham area, it is, um, Memory Hagler Knitting on 
Columbiana um, in, I think it's technically Hoover. It's Hoover or Vestavia. Just Google it. I think it's knit happens with a Z at the end dot com. And they're super sweet and I love them. And I may or may not be heading over to knit night this morning. It'll depend on when we're going. Um, we're also cat sitting this weekend for our friends that are going out of town. The cats aren't here, they're at their house, so we have to go over and feed them and all that fun stuff and get the couch. So it'll depend on the timing whether I can go there or not. But I'm looking forward to see how that goes. So be sure and vote. I hope that you're having a good week and that you continue to have a good week and a good weekend and that it's getting cooler where you are too. So until next time, I will stop blathering. <laughs>